All right, 276, this is, thankfully, for all parties involved, thankfully, <laughs> the last video, um, the last video supplement for the material. There are still videos for code samples, so to maybe just get moderately excited. Um, but here we are talking about 6.14 overloaded functions. This is page 360 in the textbook, and it's actually fairly simple. Um, we have the ability inside of C++, and again, all of the languages that are derived from C++. Um, but we have the ability to have functions with the same names, so long as they have different parameter types or parameter lists. So what does that mean? I can do addition with an integer or two integers. That's a little bit more complete, right? So I can take int1 plus int2 and return that value. I've done addition with a function. But is that addition the same if I have double values? Well, the mathematic function is the same, right? It's still plus. But the return values are going to be different because I will have double values. So, um, you know, 5.5 plus 5.5 equals 11 in double math. But in integer math, 5.5 plus 5.5 equals 10. So it's handy to be able to have one function called addition that takes ints as parameters and have another function that does addition that's called addition, but it takes doubles as parameters. C++ can manage this for you. So as long as you have an argument list from inside of your calling location. So here on, let's point at code, right? Here, uh, this is program 6-27, and it is on page 3. 60. Uh, I'm going to square the number, so a number times itself. Uh, here on line number 7, that takes an integer, so this is my program, uh, my function rather, prototype. Here on line number 8, uh, I have the same operation, so I'm squaring something, but this time it returns a double and uh, it has a double as its parameter. So here, inside of main, I have, and I knew you would do that, uh, I have on lines number 11 and 12 declarations for a user int and a user float. So you can see where this is going, I hope by now. Uh, what I'm going to do is enter an integer as a floating point value, and I'm going to get that user int and a user float, and I'm going to pass uh, those arguments to the proper function based on the argument. So what that means is when I make a call here to um, square based on user int on line 22, that is an integer. So what is going to happen during runtime when this is happening is C++ is going to look at that function call. Great, square. Uh-oh. I have two functions over here which are called square. One takes an int, the other takes a double. So let's look at the argument. Oh, this particular function call, the, the first segment there on line 22, uh, the argument is an integer argument. So that tells C++ to call the square that has a parameter that's an int. The next segment here on that very same line is to call square. But this time, inside of that argument, I can see, oh, I have a floating point argument. So I can call the double um, square to get this done. So that's the idea of overloading. I have multiple functions with the same name, but they have different parameters, or they take different arguments. This is another one, and it's the last one where I say, the payout for this comes the first week in CIS 277. The payout for this comes when we're talking about object-oriented programming where we can have more than one um, call to 
uh, a what's referred to as a constructor for an object. And I am super happy if you go, huh, that'll be interesting when I get there. Great. Uh, for the time being, I can do math with integers or floating point by having two functions with the same name but different definitions. And if you can do that, I'm super happy. So thank you, 276, for buckling down for the rodeo that was Chapter 6. We're, we're getting to the clear now. So uh, good job, everybody.